So robotic process automation tools have made it so much easier to create robots today. But often people overlook that you need to optimize your process before deploying it in production. Today, we're going to see a really good example on how to optimize your process. So instead of using so many activities and actions, we are going to use minimal actions to achieve the same goal. Hey guys, my name is Reda, and this is a series of videos where we take a process, speed it up and optimize it. And this is going to be the last video in the series. Let's dive to my screen. Okay, so first thing first, let's open up UiPath Studio. And from here, we're going to create a new process. Let's call it RPA Challenge Level 3. Let's create it. While it's creating, let's open up another UiPath Studio instance where we're going to copy paste what we have already created in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, just go to my channel and watch this exact video where I created the process of data entry. Now let's go back to the UiPad Studio that we have already created. Let's open up our page challenge level one. We simply are going to copy paste what we have in here. So we're going to copy the whole main sequence, control C, and let's open up this. Let's delete the main sequence and let's paste what we have just copied. And now we have the process that is already copied. And here I'm going to go to UI path, and I'm going to copy the Excel sheet as well. I'm going to put it in the newly created folder, RPA Challenge Level 3, that I have just created. Okay, now I'm good to go. I can run the process here, but our goal is not to run the process, but to optimize it. So whenever you want to optimize a process, go action by action, and you see the repetitive things that can be optimized inside of your process. So here we have a read range. It's one action. We cannot optimize this. We have a use browser, also can't be optimized. We call start, also can't be optimized. And once we come here, we see that we have multiple type into, and this is the part that we can optimize. So if we find a way to make this type into dynamic, instead of just type in one field per type into, we can make one type into that will be able to populate everything that we have in the page. So instead of having seven actions, we should find a way to make it one action that will be able to write everywhere in the page. So this is the part that we are going to optimize. Okay, so how can we do that? Let's click on this activity type into and let's go to properties. And under properties, we're going to go to target. And here we have used the strict selector. So let's open the strict selector and see if there is a part where we can make the selector dynamic. So let's click here. And as you can see, we have first name in here. And if we go to the second activity and we go to selector, strict selector, we're going to find last name. So if we find a way just to replace this element here, a, a name attribute, we can make this uh, selector dynamic and we don't have to use seven type into's. We can instead use one type into every time and we can just replace this value in here with first name, last name, address, running company, etc., etc. So let's cancel this and let's go back to first name. Let's go back to the first name and delete the other ones. Good. And now I will have a for each activity. I will drag it and drop it in here. And I am going to go through the columns because the column names that we have in the Excel sheet challenge, first name, last name actually contains the same values as the RPA challenge. So we can just use them as the variable inside of our selector. So let's go back here and go to challenge DT dot column columns. And here I'm going to rename this into current, current column, just to keep the names in sync. And here I'm going to put the first name inside of here. So now I will go here and I will click on the 
strict selector, I will click on the plus sign and I will click on open in advanced editor. And here I will replace the first name. I will add two double quotes and inside them I will write current column dot column name. Good. And inside of here, instead of writing current row first name, I will make it current column dot column name. And that's basically it. We have replaced the seven type intos with one type into in here instead of for each loop. So instead of using seven activities, we basically just used two. So let's run the process. Now, as you can see, the process have worked and it has finished in seven seconds. Let me change this to field instead of first name. So now we have been able to replace seven type into activities with one. And the best thing about this replacement is that even if the UI changes, say for example, we add a new field in here, as long as we add a new column, this process is still going to work. Meaning that our process is going to work even when the UI changes, as long as we keep the same structure, of course. And for me, this is what separates an experienced RPA developer. It's not about making a, a working process. It's all about making a working process that will work for three, five to 10 years with minimal intervention. You don't want to be touching your process so much once you go into production. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching this, the whole series since the start. And we're going to meet in a new series. Catch you guys on the next one.